right, let's create the app by doing Rails new. And then the name of the app, I'm going to do travel app. And then dash D PostgreSQL, which will specify the database. And then I'm going to also pass in dash T to skip the default test suite. All right, after that's installed, we can CD into the app. And I'm going to start it up to see if it's working. So we can type Rails S and then go to localhost 3000. And we'll see, yay, you're on Rails. So that's really good. So that means everything's set up. We have Webpacker installed. If you see any errors about Webpacker, you'll just want to go and run Rails Webpacker install. Because sometimes that can happen to you and you have to just run that again. Or to install it because you don't have it. But if that's if you're seeing this page, that means that Rails is all set up. So now we can go and get some of the frameworks that we're gonna use. Which I'm gonna use Rails Bytes because they have really helpful scripts that'll let us set up the framework just by pasting this URL into the app. And it's just uh, Rails t uh, rake task that's going to set this all up and run those commands that they have. So that's really helpful. So we're going to get Tailwind CSS set up and just with no work at all. So that's really great. And after we have that installed, I'm going to add Hotwire by adding the Hotwire Rails gem. So just bundle add Hotwire dash Rails. And then we're going to do the Hotwire rake task. So Rails Hotwire install. Alright, so if we refresh, we'll see that we're still on the Yay You're on Rails page. So let's do something so we can change that. So I'm going to make a new tab and I'm going to write Rails G Scaffold Trip. And I'm just going to press enter and that's going to create all the routes, the views, the controller, and the model for us. And then we're just going to have to do a Rails DB migrate. And that'll migrate the database. All right, so now that we're in the app, let's go to config routes.rb and you can see that there's resources trips and that was set up by the scaffold. So that's going to give us all of the routes to update, view and show all of the, uh, show the index page. So I'm going to write a root and that's going to go to the trips controller, the index action. And now if we refresh, we're going to see that we're on the trips index but if you look in the console you'll see that it says webpacker compiling and this can take a long time because it's pretty much just webpacker compiling all the javascript every time that you change something in the app javascript folder anything inside of here if it changes it has to recompile with webpacker so that can take sometimes even up to a minute so what we can do to make that faster is just open a new tab and start a webpack dev server and we can do this just by typing bin slash webpack dev server and that'll start the server up and that'll just make it so it can compile a lot quicker it makes it really nice so after we got that set up I'm just gonna go into the app and one thing that I'm going to do is since we're using Tailwind CSS, I'm not going to use this asset style sheet, so I'm just going to delete that. You can keep that if you want to use CSS there, but I just mostly write CSS with Tailwind and inside of the JavaScript style sheet. So we'll just delete this. And if you use the Rails, if you use the Rails bytes template to install Tailwind, You'll see in the JavaScript folder style sheets, it has the application.scss. And this is where we can import all of our 
CSS and write custom classes and extend Tailwind components to. Alright, so now we're on this index page and I just want to make this look a bit nicer. So first thing I'm going to do is in the layouts application.html, I'm going to put a div around the yield and give it a class of max width 7xl and then width full and that's just gonna create a div it's and it's gonna give it a max width of somewhere around like 1400 pixels and then i can say mx auto and that's just gonna put margin on the left and right which will automatically center it and then let's close it off after the yield and let's add a class to the body and I'm just gonna do a background color for the whole background and you'll see what that looks like especially if I change this background to a light color you can see that it's just in the center and then all around it is just the body color so let's delete the color here because I want to change the color on different pages which is gonna be what the yield is doing it's just it's just adding in the different views in there so let's go to the index I'm just gonna select everything press tab to move it over two spaces and then put a div around it and let's say class equal height screen width full flex flex call And then I'm going to give it a background color, something really bright and obvious. So that looks pretty good. We can see it. I'm actually going to change it. Let's change it to use just the same white color. That looks pretty good. And then let's put a class on this trips. Let's do text 4XL. And then put some color and then font semi bold to give it a bit of boldness on the font. And then another thing that we can do is just add some padding to this container. Say P4. That'll add a little bit of padding. And then let's first create some trips before we actually style the trips because we want to see them and right now if you go to the new trip it's just this page that's you can't even see because we changed the background color so let's go to new grab everything press tab to indent it and I'm going to make a class height screen with full bggray50 slash div and then we don't really need a back button from this because you're going on a trip you don't really need to go back and I'm going to add a class to the h1 with new trip. I'm going to say text 4xl. And then this is margin top and bottom for, so you can, it's just the y axis. And that's pretty good. Now we're just going to have to add some more attributes to this model because right now we don't have any. So a trip is going to have rich text purpose and to make this work we're gonna need to set up action text so you can just open up a new tab and then write rails action text colon install and that'll set up all the JavaScript dependencies and the migrations needed for that so after that we're gonna have to do a DB migrate before we can keep going all right and that sets all that up and while we're doing this we might as well do the install for active storage that's gonna let us upload images so we can just do rails active storage colon install I didn't really see any feedback from that but hopefully that set it up
we can say has rich text purpose and now we're gonna have to go into the views trips form and add in a field for that purpose so we can just make a div class flex flex call and then I'm gonna say a form dot label for the purpose and then a form dot rich text area for the purpose too and that should set up everything for that so let's run these migrations come here and we can see that we have this but the styling doesn't really look good now if you kept that style sheets page it would but because we're not using this we need to actually grab this because they automatically put it in the asset style sheets delete that and then go into JavaScript style sheets and we can just create a new file and I'm gonna call it action text.scss and we can paste that in and then we just have to change the syntax of this to at import and then some of that and then we can just delete these comments we don't really need that and now we have the styling for the action text editor so let's go into the application.scss and we have to import that file so we can just say import action text dot scss now let's go back here looks like oh we forgot to put a semicolon in here because they require that we might have to go to where we have the dev server and just restart it manually it looks like there's still a problem expected semicolon but I did do a semicolon oh maybe up here that's where I didn't do it so this should be good Yep, and now we reload and everything looks good. So now we can go, I'm gonna close all these files real quickly and go into the views, trips, new. And this is where we're building this out. And now I'm just gonna put a div around the form and I'm gonna give it a class of margin top six so that's going to push it down a bit and then i'm going to put some padding on the inside so that's going to push the stuff inside a little bit in and away from the edges and I'll also do flex and flex call and pretty much this is just going to make it so every item that's in here is going to be arranged uh, vertically so starting from the top down it would just make sure that it's vertical if we just did flex, it would make sure that it's horizontal. So that's kind of the difference there. But if we do that and then go back, that should look pretty good. So we got the purpose and then this. Let's style this create trip button real quick. So you can see that we're just rendering a form and that's the partial right here. So we can go and let's add a class to this. Say padding x2, padding y1, and let's do indigo backgrounds give it a light background opacity and then just a light text indigo 50 which will be really light like almost white and then we can go up here and we can just say margin top four to push that down a bit let's see how that looks that's pretty nice maybe let's round the edges a bit we can say just rounded and then if you see when you hover it's not doing anything so we can just add cursor pointer I'm not sure if that's tailwind messing that up or what but it's not seeming to do that but yeah now when we hover it'll actually do that so that's good but if we actually click enter we're getting active model forbidden attributes error that's because we only added the purpose attribute to the model and in the view but you also have to add it to the controller 
which is where we're making the request to. So that would just be in the trips controller down here in the trip params. And because we only, because we didn't pass in any attributes when we did the scaffold, it's going to use this fetch, but we can just delete that and say params that require trip dot permit. And we're going to permit an array of attributes, which will be purpose. And then that should be good for now, just purpose. So let's test this out. I want to go on a trip. And then if I press create trip, I don't see anything right now because I have to show it on the page. So if we go in here and we do embedded Ruby, we can just say at trip dot purpose and that'll display it. And this is in the trips show .html. So if we reload, you can see up here it says I want to go to a trip. It's really dark, so we can wrap that in a div and say text gray 50, which will be really light. And then if we go back, we'll see that we can see it. So that's good. I want to go on a trip. So that's how the trip page is looking so far. We're going to definitely style it a lot more. But for now, let's just go back we can see all of our trips so that looks nice now the next thing that we're gonna wanna add is when you create a new trip we wanna be able to create different distant destinations that you wanna go to so to do that I'm gonna go and create a model so I'll say rails g model place and then a place is going to have a name, which will be a string by default. And then it'll also have a zip code, which will be an integer. And then I'm going to press enter. And then after this, we just have to migrate the database. All right, now that we created the place model, let's go into the app folder, into the models place. And let's add as many trips and then we're gonna say through destinations and since we're doing this we have to before that say has many destinations so that we can have many trips through that and so in this case we're gonna create another model called destination and that's going to link the trip model and the place model together so we can just say rails g model destination and let's say trip belongs to and then place belongs to and then let's migrate the database because that's going to insert a new column or new table So after we did that, we can just go in here and let's look at the destination model and that belongs to trip, belongs to place. So the last thing that we have to do to finish the connection is the trip has many destinations and has many places through destinations. And this will set up all of the relationships between them. So now all we're going to have to do is add some sort of field on the page so that you can add new, so that you can add new ones. So to do that, let's go into the views, trips, form, and let's create a new div with a class of flex, flex call, and let's do a form.label for 
places. And then we're going to say form dot select places. And then we can just say at places. And then after that, there's going to be a hash for the regular options and another hash for HTML options on the select. So we're going to do first just an empty hash and then comma and another hash, which is going to be actually putting stuff on the HTML, like classes and attributes that way. Just make sure to close that off. And then just reload the page and we have undefined method map for nil, nil class and that's because we need to go into the controllers trips controller and we have to define at places because we don't have that defined yet so if we go into the new say at places equal place dot all dot collect place we're going to just say p for place and then p.id p.name so if we go back in here we just have to put these two things inside of an array actually not a hash and that looks like that'll do it yep that works right now we don't have any places so let's go right here in the URL we can just go to places slash new no route matches it and that's because we have to go create that because we didn't do a scaffold we only created the model for the places which means we're gonna have to go and create the controller and the route ourselves so let's just go into config routes.erb and resources places and then that'll be good we can go into the controllers folder and there's no controller file right now for places so we're gonna have to create a new file places underscore controller dot rb and then do a class places controller and that's gonna inherit from the application controller and we can end that off and let's create a method new and we're gonna say at place equals place dot new and that's going to set the variable on the page that we can use to create a new place in the form. So if we go over here to the views, there's no folder for places. So we got to create that too. Just create a places folder and then a file that would be new.html.erb. Then inside of here, let's create a div with full height screen flex flex calls just like the other divs and then we could say h1 and give that a class of 4xl and some margin and then let's just say create a new place and then close that off now I'm gonna create another div and this is gonna have margin top of 8 you're gonna push it down a bit and then also with full and then inside of here let's just render form and we're gonna pass in place as at place and then close that off and this is gonna try to render a partial called form in the same folder so let's just create a file underscore form dot html dot erb and inside of here we can just say form width and now we're gonna have to pass in a model we'll say place and then we can just say do form and that off and then inside of here let's create a div say flex flex call and then I'm going to do a form label for the name. 
and then a form text field for name as well. After this, let's do another div, but we're gonna give this one some margin to push it down from that one. But still flex, flex call. And then inside of here, we can say form.label zip code, because we're doing the zip code. And then form.number field zip code. Close that off. And then the last thing we're going to need for now is just a place for the button. So we can just make a div class flex. Inside here, say form.submit. And we can give that a bit of styling. Just some padding. And then in the background, I'll just do green. And then give it a light opacity 75 and then give it some rounded corners now let's refresh and see how that looks all right that's not bad but we can't really see anything because the text is all black so let's go up here to the top of the form and that's where i'm actually gonna add in html that's gonna be a hash and then here we can pass in the html attributes like the class to give it styling so I'm gonna say flex, flex call, and just say text gray 50. Or actually what we can do is let's keep the text light and let's make the background dark. So let's go back into the new and let's just say on this div, BG gray 50. And let's also make it have rounded corners, rounded large be pretty large and then we can do some padding p4 all right and that's pretty good but we can't see the create new place so let's change that to be a light color text gray 50 all right so now we got this saying create a new place and we have a field for the name and the zip code and on the form the button for some reason it's not pushing this out of the way so let's just delete this class actions maybe that has something to do with it and let's say flex on that instead and it looks like that still didn't really help I guess let's just add some margin on the button itself and that should work still oh you know what I'm editing I'm editing the wrong thing. That's why you gotta close all your tabs so you don't get them mixed up. But I was editing the trips part, the trips view, so I actually meant to be editing the places form. And right here, I just didn't add some margin top, so that's what I'm gonna add right here. And yeah, that's why I was confused. But now that we got this figured out, it looks like uh, it's still not registering when I hover. So we just have to add cursor pointer. I don't know if that's something with Tailwind CSS forms. If it just automatically disables it, but that works for us. So I'm gonna start off creating my first place. Just say Washington DC and give it a zip code. And then now the action create could not be found. And that's because we never created the create action in the controller. So let's do that now def create and then we'll say at place equals place dot create and then we'll pass in place params and that's going to be a method that we're going to create down here and we're going to make that a private method by just writing private and then underneath we can say place params and that's going to say params dot require place and then we're going to permit the attributes which will be an array name and zip code now that we got that set up we just need to go after this create let's say at place dot save 
and let's actually make this an if statement. So if place.save, we're gonna do something else, we're gonna do something else. And in the else case, let's just render new, which will send you back to the new form, just in case you did something that the model didn't like and the form didn't like. So if it does save, we can just redirect to the places path where it shows all the places. And I think that's good. So we can save that, then go back to the places new form. I'm gonna try to do this again. Washington DC. I don't really know the real zip code, so I'm just making it up for now. But see, okay, so that's good. We actually, if you check the console, we did create a new place. So that's really good. We still got an error because we don't have an index page yet. So let's go create that just by creating another method in this controller called index. And then we can set places equal to place.all. And then inside of the places folder, let's create a new file called index.html.erb. And then inside of there, I'm gonna do some styling with full height screen, then flex, flex call. You can even give this its own background of a really light gray. And then let's do an H1 and we'll just say all places. Let's give that a class to make it big text for Excel and then text gray. 700 and I'll do font semi bold give it some boldness and then after this we can just do a loop <coughs> after this we can just do a loop by saying at places dot each do place and then we can render a place partial and pass in place and that's gonna be equal to place and then that's gonna look for a partial named place in the same folder so we just gotta create a new file underscore place dot html dot erb and this is what it's gonna find. And so for this, let's just create a div. I'm gonna say the height will be 96 because that's a tailwind height. That's pretty high and then widthful. Then we can say flex, flex call. And then inside of here, I just wanna say, I wanna render the place dot name. So you can see the place name and we'll give that a class of text gray 800 so it's gonna be pretty dark and then what I'm thinking that I want to do is do some sort of group hover on this so we can add group to the top and this is a tailwind class that they set up that will allow you to apply classes to children elements when you hover on whatever element has a class of group so if we go into this name we can just say group hover colon text gray 50 and that means whenever you hover on this top div it'll change the color inside here and then another thing i'm going to do is just create a div that wraps around that that's width three-fourths mx auto and padding to top and bottom and then close that off around this h3 and then inside of here we can say on group hover the same group hover colon will make the background really dark now if we reload let's just create another place let's call it chicago create place and now we can see all of these places right now all we can really see is the name so 
let's add some background color to this top div. Say BG gray 200. And that'll be a light gray. All right. So that's pretty nice. Let's make these centered by saying item center justify center. And then inside of here, we can add some flex and justify center just to center this text in the middle. And then now this is kind of it's kind of weird how this comes in so we can add a transition on this to make it kind of fade in and the way we can do this is go on to the element that we're changing and say transition and then duration 300 which is going to give it a duration of 300 milliseconds and let's do the same thing for the name and then reload and now and you see it kind of fades in and that's a lot better Another thing that I want to do is, if we go into the index, I want to put a wrapper around this that's going to be a grid layout, so it's going to align it really nice. So we can just put a div around it, and say class equals grid, and then we can say grid calls to grid gap 6, which is going to put some gap in between all these items. And we reload and we'll see that it's not grid gap it's just gap so I got to change that and now we can see that there's gap in between I actually want to even do a bit more go up to 8 and that looks pretty good maybe let's change the color on this top thing to be light gray and then we'll add some margin and reload all right and that's better we have these showing up the different cities. The next thing that I want to add is the ability to add image attachments on these. So when you create a new place, you can add an image. And before I do that, let's just create a quick button down here so it's easy to get to the new page. We can just say link to add new button or add new place and then new place path and then another comma and I'm gonna just add some quick styling some of this seventy five and rounded full reload okay we can see that this is kinda what I was thinking maybe let's make the text really light and you can say MR auto, which should make it smaller, should be good. Yeah, it pushes it to the side and then let's give the margin top of four to push it away from the all places. Now we can just click add new place. This is gonna let us create a new place. But before I create any more places, I wanna add in the image field. So to do this, let's first go to the models and we're going to have to set the association for that by saying has one attached image and that's going to be on the place model. And then let's go into the controllers, places controller. After the zip code, we're just going to add image and that's going to allow it in the params. And then the last step would be going into the views places form and let's create another div to hold the image field it's just gonna have the same style some flex flex call to make it horizontal and then form dot label image and form dot image field for image And I actually meant form.file field. They don't have an image field helper, so I just messed that up. But if you go back and see it, file field, that's correct. Just a thing that you can upload files. 
that looks pretty good let's start off by creating a new place i'm gonna go find some pictures san diego grab one of these pictures and then come back here drop it in here you'll see that it got uploaded and then add this in <coughs> and this is just a really simple file field for now we might upgrade that in another video but for now let's just leave this and create the place and we can see that we have the new San Diego but we're not actually able to see the image yet because we just have a gray background so let's close out of these tabs and we're gonna have to go into the underscore place partial just the place partial and then let's add an image tag for the place dot image and then I'm gonna add a class on that which will be height full or height 96 width full object cover and then at the end we're gonna want to say if place dot image dot attached and that's just gonna make sure that it only shows the image if there's actually one uploaded and that's gonna prevent potential errors so right here we can see that it's not showing it here but now the San Diego is getting kind of cut off so we got to fix the styling on that and to do that let's just go up here to the top container add a class of relative and that'll allow us to add a class on this container around the name we can say absolute and then that'll just pop it on top of all the other content which will be super nice still gonna look the same as before but now it can go on top of an image so that's nice right now this is just kinda what it does so far but what I want it to do is when you click on one of these blocks it actually pops open a modal so you can edit it and to do that I'm gonna use hotwire so to start off let's go into the layouts application.html the ear and right in here at the end of the body even underneath this div that we added let's just add a empty turbo frame so we're gonna do turbo frame tag and I'm gonna call it modal now that we have that we can go into the places place and instead of this being just a div we can make this be a, a tag which will be a link and then we can give it a href that's where it's gonna go let's do some embedded Ruby inside of here and it's gonna go to edit place path and then we're gonna pass in place and that'll create the URL for edit place path place and then how we're gonna link it to that turbo frame in the layouts is we can add a data attribute called data turbo frame and we can set that equal to modal and that'll pretty much act like this link was clicked inside of that turbo frame inside of here so it'll go to the edit place path and right now we don't have that so let's go into controller and we'll say we'll give it an edit path we can say at place equal place dot find params id and that'll set that place in here and then we can create a new file in the places folder call that edit.html to be and then honestly let's just grab the same style from new paste and edit because it's pretty much the same form except for let's just change create a new place to edit place and then it's actually go up here above the h1 and let's wrap this in a turbo frame and that's gonna be called modal the same as in the layout where we have the modal 
So what's going to happen is when you click on this link, it's going to act as if it was inside of the TurboFrame in the layouts application. And it's going to go to the edit page, find the TurboFrame with the same name, and replace it with the content inside, which will allow us to just put a modal here that pops up. So I'm going to wrap this in a div and I'm going to give it a class fix height screen with full I'm going to close my window real quick it's really loud outside Alright, that's better. Now we have this edit page rendering the form. So if we reload and we try to click on one of these, nothing happened. Let's go into the let's go into here and see what happened. So it started to get replaces edit. It processed as HTML, but I didn't really see anything happen. Let's just keep styling this. Uh, let's go into the edit. We have the turbo frame inside of here. We're saying fix height screen with full. I think we also have to add top zero and that'll actually bring it to the top. And yep, now we see that it just pops up on top. So that's pretty nice because we have the fixed class which just puts it on top. It's position fixed. But we actually want to style this a bit better so let's say that's fine but inside of here we can do another div around this and we'll say with three-fourths MX auto B BG gray 50 rounded large and we'll pretty much just delete the class over here because that's what we're gonna be adding up here as another container and this is going to be the modal, which actually we're probably going to, with 3 fourth might not do it for us. And it's pretty good. I guess let's try, let's say on small screen with 3 fourth, but as soon as we get to a large screen, with 1 half. And that should fix it. So yep, now it's with 1 half, but it's still up at the top. So what we can do is on this fixed height screen, we can just say flex and then justify center, which will push it to the center. And then we can also say padding top of 40, which will be a lot of padding, which will push it down. So that's good. Now the form's kind of going really far because we have height full I think what we want to do is just on here let's say it's self start and that's just a flex class to align it to the start which will just make it smaller and we can't really see the edit place we got to fix that real quick because we made that dark before but we can change that to be a darker shade of gray and let's also move the padding from just right here to be on the whole modal so it affects the edit as well and now that looks pretty good except there's not really much functionality to close it updating it works to get rid of it so that still has some functionality right now but there's no way to cancel out of it and also it looks like you can't click the same one more than once so let's fix those issues right here All right, what, do, what we want to do is add another background behind this. So we can say a div class equal width full height screen BG gray 700 or 800 to be a really dark gray. And then we'll say BG opacity 50, which will make the opacity lighter so you can see through it. 
And just make sure to indent all this HTML. Close off the div. And all right. Actually, you know what? All right, let's create a div for the background, which is going to be a dark gray. And then also give it a light opacity so you can see through it. And now width, full, height, screen, and then also fix. Top zero. And then let's just close that off there. Let's see how that looks. So yeah grays out everything which is good but it also grays out the modal and we want the modal to be on top so if we go right into here this is a modal container we can just add a class of fixed onto this and that'll put it on top of the gray so yeah that looks good now another thing that I want to add is a little close button up here so we can close the modal so to do that, I'm going to go inside of this container right above edit place. I'll make a div and I'll just say class flex and actually I'll wrap the edit place text as well. I'll just say justify between, which means it's going to push the elements away from each other. So we'll have edit place on the left and then the next element would be on the right, which will be a link to just X to close out. We can give that some styling. Text gray. 800. Font semi bold. And then give it a href of hash, which will just be to nothing. And then if we go back here, open up this form, we have this close button. And when we click it, it does actually work. But if we inspect the console, we are getting lots of errors because in Turbo, you're inside of a Turbo frame in the modal and you're clicking a link, which is actually navigating your frame to that page, which will just be a hashtag and it's saying that there's no matching modal. And well, you could just leave this and add, have this as your functionality. I think that's not the best and it's prone to errors because it's already causing a bunch of errors which could mess up other things. So what we're going to do to fix this is let's just go into the layouts application and I'm just going to add a stimulus controller onto the body and I'm going to call it modal and that's just going to be the modal stimulus controller. We can define that in the javascript folder, controllers folder create a new file and I'll call that modal controller.js and then what we're going to want to do is import controller the controller class from stimulus and then we're going to export our own class that extends from that controller and that's just going to set up set it up to be extends controller that's going to set up to be the modal controller so we can access it on the page like this to set it up I'll have the controller on the body which is fine and then we can go into the edit over to this X button and we're just going to add data action equals modal hashtag close which will go to the modal controller and the close method so we're gonna have to create that Let's close and for this we're gonna wanna close this modal and to do that we're gonna have to get rid of this HTML and also we're gonna wanna clear out the source on this modal so to do that we're just gonna add them in as data targets so to do that let's go onto the turbo frame tags say data hash and then we'll say modal target 
and we'll say that that's a frame and now if we go into the edit page we can go right here to where the code is that wraps this whole modal and for that we're gonna say that's a data modal target equals container so that's gonna give us a frame target and a container target that we can use inside of this modal controller so to link those to this controller we have to add a static value static targets we're gonna set that equal to an array and we're gonna just say frame and container and that's gonna set up the targets with stimulus so in this close we can say this dot frame dot source equals empty string and then this dot container target dot remove and that'll be good but if we go into here and we close out we're still looks like cannot set property source of undefined I wonder if we somehow looks like data modal target frame that looks fine I think what we have to what we have to do is actually in this close we have to go into the event and we have to prevent default because if we don't do that then the X button will try to go to the link and it'll delete the turbo frame so we're not going to be able to access it anymore so this should do it but it still says cannot set property source of undefined let's inspect this element it says turbo frame data model target is frame so that should be fine. Oh, but I just said this dot frame and I didn't say target. So for all of these static targets, you have to say target afterwards for it to grab that element. So I just messed that up and that's why. But now if we look, we can close that and that works great. That works really nice and we don't have any errors at all. Super nice. Let's try to edit some stuff like add a picture to this so we're gonna need some pictures of Chicago this one looks nice let's grab that and go back to the app drop it in the file field let's update it and it looks like we got some errors here it said the action update could not be found for places controller and that's because we never created the update action in the places controller we just have these actions so far so to fix that all we have to do just create an update action in here we're gonna wanna say set the place by place.find params id but right here we actually have two places two functions where we're doing the same exact thing and whenever you have something like that you should put it into a before action so let's go into private and we'll say set place and then end and let's just grab this code drop it in here and that'll be a function that we can reuse that will run before both of these so we can delete out of here and then at the top of the controller say before action set place but we only want to run it on edit and update so that'll just run this set place before these two actions and now these actions are looking pretty empty but we're gonna fill up update right here by saying at place dot update we're gonna pass in the place params and we're also gonna say that this is gonna be an if statement so if place dot update then else so if it does update what we can do is just respond to format and then this is going to respond to the different formats that it could be so if someone's not using JavaScript they would just have a regular HTML page so this would be the format for them so we might want to redirect somewhere but in this case we're not worrying about that so let's just say empty and then we'll also say format.turboStream and we'll set that to an empty stream and that should work pretty well but then in the case that it doesn't update it means that there's errors 
So we want to go in here. I'll just update that modal with the. Uh, actually, I think since we have this, I should just be able to just respond to do format here too. And let's say format.html render edit. And I think that should just redirect to the edit. So let's see. But we don't even have any validation, so we don't have to worry about that right now. About anything really going wrong. So everything should work. So let's look up Washington DC picture. Get a picture of that. I'll update this update and let's see what happened this time in the vlogs it looks like yep we created an active storage blob so that's really good it set up that but it's still it didn't close out by itself we have to close it which isn't the best experience so what we can do to fix that is just go into that form partial the places form and on this form we can say data inside of this hash say action and we're gonna set an event for the submit of the form and when it submits we can say modal close now the only problem with this is that when we go and let's say we just upload an image and we update it closes the form but it never if we reload Actually, you know what it does because I'm not sure why that that works because it shouldn't work. It should prevent the form from submitting. Let's try this update. Well, it looks like it actually works. So since that works, let's just leave it. And yep, that seems pretty good for now. Another thing that we can do is whenever you click outside of the modal, if we want to make that close. Right now, what's outside of the modal is this div with the background that's fixed, so that's really useful. We can just put a data action on that, and we can say on click. It's going to go to the modal controller and close. So that way, when we click on here, if we click anywhere outside, it'll also close, which is pretty useful. And then let's update this. But as you can see, if we change something, like make this Chicago 2, it doesn't automatically change on the page. So if we want that to happen without refreshing, we're going to have to use some hot wire. So let's go to the, let's close out all these tabs real quick. Go to places index. Right here where we're saying places.h2 place. Let's make this a turbo frame instead of a div. So I'll just say turbo frame, and then we can close this out. And this is just the HTML equivalent of that turbo frame tag. That's just what the turbo frame tag makes. So we can literally just make this ourselves by saying turbo frame ID places, and then give it a class. And that should work well. The other thing that we should do is go into place and give this a unique ID. So say ID equals, and then we're going to do embedded Ruby. And say DOM ID. And this will create a unique ID for this object, which is place. So after we got that all set up, where we're actually going to set up these turbo streams to come from is inside of the model in a callback. So we can go into the models folder, place model and do an after update commit and I'll do that block so after it updates we're gonna broadcast replace to and we're gonna have to pass in the identifier which in this case we're just doing places and this will already by itself take care of the ID it'll use DOM ID to create that ID with the place 
instance. So this should work by itself. If we go and we try to update this, do this, we see actually nothing happened. And the only, the reason that that happened is because we also have to link in on the page. So right here we have a turbo frame places. In the model we're saying broadcast replace two places. But we also have to say turbo stream from and that's a helper that will create the action cable WebSocket connection with the model, which is super useful. So now if we just inspect and we go outside of this turbo frame places, we'll see there's a turbo cable stream source and it already has the channel and the name set up. So it already takes care of all that for you. Now if we go to update, let's say this is Chicago 253 you'll see that now it goes to Chicago 253. But something interesting happens with the image. It just blanks out. And let's see, does that happen elsewhere if we change it? Update place. It looks like it happens everywhere. Let's, let's inspect the console when we change that. Because that is weird. Well. a new one real quick all right so yeah if we try to update this you'll see that the images the image gets replaced with the new image from the frame but it's using for the host, it's using example.org instead of what it should be, which is localhost. So to fix this, if you go into that places place partial, right here we're doing the image tag. We're just saying for place.image, which will automatically generate a local path. But what we really need to do is say URL for, which will generate a path with the host too. So that's going to include localhost, or if you're in production, it'll include your URL host. So once we refresh this, if we go and change this to just Chicago 222, update it, you'll see that it changes the text and it also keeps the same background. So if we're going to change the image, it would automatically update as well. So let's just say I changed that to Miami, so I might as well change this to Miami. So that's Miami, then we have Washington, we have San Diego. And yeah, this is working really nice. I really like how this works. We can just open it, edit it, exit out. Another thing that I want to probably do is right here where it adds a new place. It's doing this. It's going to a new page, but we, we could also just make it reuse this modal. So it pops up. Instead of just edit place, it'll be new place when you click this button. And to do that, it's actually pretty straightforward we'll just go into this place and we'll go into the index down here we said add new place at the end let's add a comma and then I'm gonna pass in the data attributes which will say it's gonna be a turbo frame which is gonna specify that the turbo frame is the modal turbo frame the same as we did before so that's going to go to new place path. So if we go to places and the new page, we have all of this inside. Let's just wrap it in a turbo frame and we'll say modal. Let's make that a block and put all the code inside. So now already we should be able to click this and have it pop on the screen and see it just pops down here because that's where the turbo frame is. What we want it to do is have the same modal layout as before so we can go to this places edit and we have all this code for the modal let's just grab some of that the top three divs so we can reuse that for our modal right here and then we're going to want to make sure to just indent everything to the correct spot and then add the ending divs Just 
should be the last div and then let's indent this and that should be good right there that should already set it up in the modal so we can click add new place and here we have it popping up but create new place it was white before so we have to change it to be darker and if we reload right here and we click we'll see that edit place it pops up nice it's kind of a lot of margin right here I might actually change that I had it doing a quite a bit of margin here we might not even need that much only four that should be good the edit place actually has a ton of margin too so let's change that a bit I don't think we need that much margin All right, so now we can edit and we can create a new place. I'm not seeing the close button. Maybe I left that out. No, it looks like we have it here. Huh, I'm not sure why it's not coming through. Or no, that's edit, that's the new. Right here, I guess we, yeah, we didn't add it. What we had to do is add another div. That would be with full flex and justify between which is gonna put this create new place on the left and then this button on the right and now we just want to close that off and that should set up the right styling for that so we can click here to exit out and yeah it works it was working the same as the edit now so that's really cool let's just add a new one in here say Memphis to give it a random zip code and also just a random picture so I don't remember which one was Memphis create new place and you can see that that submits the form it works the same except for we don't see a new place called Chicago on here and that's because inside of this model on the place we're only doing a broadcast after update we're also going to want to do one after create so we'll just say after create commit broadcast replace except for instead of replace we're gonna say append because it's gonna add it to the bottom and also instead of doing a block because we're not really doing much code we might as well just put it inside of these hashes because that's how you can that's how you usually want to define it if it's on one line and then if it spans multiple lines you just change it to do and end but in this case, it's really short, the code that we're doing, so I'm just going to drop it into this so it's the one-liner syntax, which will look pretty clean. So we have after update commit, which is going to replace, after create, which is going to append it and add it. So now we have here, Memphis, all of these. Let's add a new one to test this out. Texas, San Diego. I'm just gonna do this even though it's not San Diego add it and yep we got it here popping up so that's really nice let's do Montana I actually want to get some pictures because Montana is pretty nice Yeah, that looks so nice. So let's save that. Go over here. Zip code, I don't really know. Create it. So yeah, now we have a bunch of different places which will be really useful when we go back to the main point where we're creating a new trip for the purpose and different places. So I think that this has been enough for this video. It's gone on for a while, so I'll just finish. I'll start finishing the rest of this and working on this in the next video. So yeah, I'll see you guys then. Bye.